So my presentation is on proptosis, which is eye displacement. And the reason I wanted to do this project was because um, when I was working at my vet back at home, there was an old lady that came in saying that like her pug, her the eye popped out again. And um, the doctor was like, well, like, what do you do when it normally happens? And she said, yeah, I just put some butter in it and I popped it out. <laughs> See, that's the thing, very practical. Butter? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so they were like, mm, that's interesting. probably not the best. Mm. So in general, so, uh, proptosis is, can be caused by injuries um, to the head of the face where the eye gets damaged. It can come out of the, the skull or it just um, gets enlarged. And it can also be caused by trauma, infections, or like in serious cases, tumors. And there are a lot of different types of like problems that can happen and cause proptosis. Like those. Um, so, buthomia uh, is the is when the eye just gets enlarged but doesn't shift. Um, and exothomia is when the eye actually like gets displaced from the socket. Mm. And in in the first one, it's the eye the eyelid is also still in place, but it just can't it's not able to close around the eyeball. So are you saying the eye physically gets bigger? Yes. And, and are you gonna tell us the causes of that maybe or uh the causes would be the ones like in the previous slide oh, okay, where okay. um like ulcers may cause, like it's okay. a shift, or, or glaucoma is, is a common cause um, to okay. increase pressure on the eye. So, so treatments, they have surgeries where they could, they just suture the eye, um, put antibiotics on the eye, and then also like they can give oral antibiotics and then let the eye take some time to heal. And in serious cases, if the eye comes out of the socket and it is, um, you don't get it treated fast enough, you might have to remove it because there's like not a lot of good ways to put it back in and let it heal. Now you might want to point out the bottom for the people in the back. That's a progression of the same animal, yeah. right? Yeah. So this is day day like zero when um, they first come in to get surgery, and then the suture. And then day 10, day 22, and day 37. So it's nice to see that you can still fix it. Yeah, that's very, I mean, that's dramatic when you see day zero is usually like the day it was presented. So that's what it looked like on the left, and then they sutured it into the socket then. Mm -hmm. And they probably put some antibiotic or whatever in, and then look at that day 37. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay, and there's your citations. Are you ready for questions? Yeah. Okay. Questions or comments? Who's seen this? Who has yes, any? Yes, I'm thinking of you because this happened yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's for my phone, guys. Well, it happened yesterday. Yeah, it's now, this was like yesterday in what? At work. Oh, at work. Okay, so you had one of these at, at yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. It looks almost like the picture there. It's in common in dogs with like. Short snouts. Oh, okay, the brachycephalic, is that the right way to say that? They're common in the brachycephalic breeds, the breeds that look like they ran into a brick wall yep. <laughs> at high speed. That's brachycephalic. Okay, comment? Somebody had a comment, I thought. Rochelle, let me I was it. reading a book this summer, and there was a vet that ha had like its owner restraining a chihuahua, and the chihuahua. Was struggling, and so the owner squeezed it tighter, and its eyes just popped out. Oh! Uh, I say yeah. both eyes. Oh no, I think it was oh, just one. Sorry, eyes popped out, and so they had to do surgery. And the owner was kind of intense, and was like a biker, and put an eye patch over the eye, and she just kept it on there for the rest of his life. Okay, okay. Yeah. So even restraint yep. can wow. cause yeah. on the smaller breeds. Here we go. Comment. Are there any genetic links? The question is genetic links. That's not something that I, I researched, but I would I think it's just the okay. short face. The brachycephalic. So maybe the genetics is those small breeds have maybe some genes that have a propensity for that condition. What happened to the dogs that had the butter in the eye? Oh yeah, what happened? Yeah. 
I have no idea. I, I came in, it was like oh, a story that the doctor told me. Okay. okay. No, he was found in... No, I think they, they sutured it and then it was fine. He was found in a bowl of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make a joke out of that. Butter, yeah, these home remedies. Interesting. Yeah, I know. People yeah. also have some yeah. weird ideas. Yeah, exactly. and it is Anybody weird. else have any comments? Are there any early signs like you're telling that that's going to happen? That's a good question. Like, let's say you have a young dog, and you're wondering that might occur later in life. I don't know. Any anybody have any suggestions on that? Probably with like glaucoma and stuff that progresses, you can probably see the pressure building behind the eye, and the eye will swell a lot before it just happens. Okay, so maybe if you are a good observer, you can kind of tell because it's probably something that's. Uh, chronically developing rather than all of a sudden pop yeah. it's it, yeah and it's common in like dogs that get like graves disease where their eyes will slowly oh start, yeah graves disease is another actually happen to come out okay um, but that would you could have seen that developing yeah too, that's the only yeah. genetic thing that i know yeah. of graves disease yeah. i know um ophthalmologists like for animals they test pressure eye pressure too yeah mm -hmm. you can like see that like if it's if it's really high that this might happen right i'm always amazed at the the day zero pictures and then how it resolves in a month or more. I've seen more. I've seen a lot of pictures like that, and I'm always amazed at how sometimes it turns out. I mean, it is amazing what they can do. So no matter how bad you're.